hailed as the 2008 Red Bull Air Race champion and having ended victoriously in the European Aerobatics Freestyle Championship, Hannes Arch was also celebrated for his daring feats in aviation. Esteemed by his peers for a career brimming with high-stakes ventures, his extraordinary talent and passion for aviation were without equal. Yet, in a tragic twist of fate in September 2016, a routine helicopter supply flight to a remote mountain hut ended in tragedy. Salzburg Airport, nestled in the heart of Austria, serves as a gateway to the scenic beauty and rich cultural heritage of the area. Renowned for its efficiency and connectivity, this airport also harbors a unique connection to the world of Red Bull, epitomized by the extraordinary Hangar 7. Owned by Red Bull's founder, Dietrich Mateskitz, Hangar 7 is not just an aircraft hangar, but a dynamic cultural hub that showcases the historic Flying Bull's aircraft fleet an impressive collection of Formula One race cars, and also includes art exhibitions. Hangar 7 stands as a vibrant testament to Red Bull's commitment to innovation and the arts, inviting visitors to explore the intersection of speed, creativity, and human achievement. Salzburg Airport also served as the home base for Hannes Arch, where he stationed his Robinson R66 turbine helicopter, his regular presence at Salzburg underscores the airport's significance in the aviation community, connecting it directly with the legacy of one of the world's most acclaimed aerobatic pilots. On September 8th, under the clear skies of autumn with optimal flying conditions, Hannes Arsch was gearing up his Robinson R66 for a brief flight to the Elberfelder hut, situated 50 nautical miles to the south of Salzburg airport. This flight was aimed at delivering essential food supplies to the remote hut, with plans for a return trip on the very same day. The R-66 helicopter took off from Salzburg Airport at 12.22 p.m., operating under a unique permit granted by the Corinthian state government. This special authorization, valid from June 15th to September 15th, permitted up to three external landings and takeoffs, specifically for transporting fresh food supplies to the Elberfelder hut. The operations were restricted to the hours between 7.30 a.m. and 2 p.m., guaranteeing that the supply missions to the hut were executed within the allotted time frame. The Elberfelder hut, nestled in the heart of the Hohe Tower National Park within the Austrian state of Carinthia, stands as a beacon for mountaineers and nature enthusiasts at an elevation of 7,694 feet above sea level. Owned and managed by the German Alpine Club's Wuppertal branch, the hut serves as an important stop on several hiking routes, providing a cozy retreat amidst the rugged landscape and is accessible for stays during the mid-June to mid-September season. As an avid mountaineer and owner of an air transport company delivering provisions to Alpine huts, Arch was familiar with the Elberfelder hut and its surrounding region. He regularly undertakes these supply runs, showcasing his dedication and connection to this Alpine retreat. Having navigated through the breathtaking scenery of the Austrian Alps, Arch reached the hut at 12.52 in the afternoon, about 30 minutes after departure from Salzburg Airport. Following a routine landing at an elevation of nearly 7,700 feet, the supplies were offloaded with the help of the hut attendant. Arch then spent the remainder of the afternoon enjoying some relaxation time and exploring the surrounding area. At around 6.30 p.m., Arch began the preparations for his return flight to Salzburg Airport. In a spontaneous decision, it was agreed that the hut attendant, who had been stationed at the hut for five weeks, would join him for the journey back. Consequently, 
the attendant boarded the R-66. By 7.06 p.m., Arch and the attendant took off, and a 180-degree turn were executed after takeoff in order to position the helicopter towards the valley's exit. The R-66 forward speed started to increase as Arch maneuvered the helicopter through the valley. However, merely a minute and 30 seconds after takeoff, a catastrophic event unfolded. The helicopter collided with the valley's side, crashing into a sloping rock face and disintegrating upon impact. At around 10.15 p.m., alarm was raised by one of Archer's employees due to his failure to return to Salzburg Airport as scheduled. By this time, an emergency locating transmitter from Archer's helicopter had already sent a distress signal to the Flight Control Authority, Ostro Control. A search operation involving both ground and air teams was launched immediately. By 2.30 a.m. the following morning, the wreckage was located approximately 650 meters northeast of the Elberfelder hut. The search ended in heartbreak as Hannes Arsch was tragically found deceased at the crash site. In a miraculous turn of events, the 62-year-old hut attendant was found alive but with serious injuries. The tragic news of Hannes Arch's accident and untimely demise sent shockwaves not only through his family and close associates, but also across Austria and the global aviation community, leaving many in disbelief. Questions began to emerge, pondering how such a catastrophic event could occur to an esteemed pilot known for his proficiency, experience and meticulous attention to safety protocols. The perplexity grew around the circumstances that led to the tragic accident, particularly given that the flight was considered routine and with minimal risk. The Austrian Ministry of Transport's affiliated department swiftly initiated a comprehensive investigation to determine the causes behind the tragic crash. An elaborate investigation was carried out in the months following the accident, and finally by June 2018, the conclusive accident report was released. The accident report documented a thorough investigation into numerous potential causes and contributing factors of the accident. It noted that after careful examination and analysis, primary concerns like maintenance or technical problems, weight and balance considerations, local weather predictions, and any medical conditions were conclusively ruled out as either causes or contributing factors to the accident. The testimony of the hut attendant, who survived the crash, was crucial in shedding light on the events leading up to the accident. He informed investigators that just before takeoff, Arch had outlined his flight plan to him, indicating that upon departure, he would ascend 1,000 feet before heading straight towards Salzburg, as this would negate the need to navigate around obstacles. He further detailed that as they were flying through the valley, rocks and stones unexpectedly came into view within the helicopter's landing light. Reacting to this, Arch maneuvered the helicopter into a steep nose-up position. However, a second later, they collided with the sloped rock face of the valley. Armed with this critical information, investigators managed to reconstruct the challenging conditions Arch encountered in the moments leading up to the crash. Surprisingly, it became apparent that at dusk, within a valley devoid of external artificial lighting or a visible horizon, the cockpit and panel lights produced a significant dazzling effect on the pilot. This effect combined with the helicopter's spotlight, which casts light in a narrow cone shape, likely led to Arch becoming disoriented. He would have lost his sense of the horizon, significantly limiting his visibility outside the helicopter and contributing to the tragic outcome. 
The accident report identified the likely cause as a loss of orientation during the flight. It concluded that the use of the landing light, along with bright, undimmed cockpit instrument lighting and the minimal presence of natural light, significantly contributed to this disorientation. It's noteworthy that the accident report does not further discuss Archer's initial plan to ascend to 1,000 feet before continuing his flight path to Salzburg. Additionally, it omits mention of the specific permit, which was only valid for flights to and from the Elberfelder hut between 7 a.m. and 2 p.m., as the accident flight took off from the Elberfelder hut outside of these authorized hours. Hannes Arch's remarkable contributions to aviation cannot be overstated. His legacy is a testament to a life lived with passion, dedication, and a pursuit of excellence that transcends the bounds of the skies. Arch's adventurous spirit and remarkable achievements will undoubtedly continue to inspire individuals to embrace life's full spectrum, encouraging them to achieve great success while remaining humble and kind to others. His story serves as a poignant reminder of the human potential for greatness, compassion, and the enduring impact one individual can have on the world and the people around them. Risk is always relative, you know, and it always depends on how, how good you are trained, how good you are there, like uh, mind-wise. And I think I learned to deal with risk quite early in life, already when I grew up, you know, at home. Uh, I got the freedom from my from my parents to just go out there and, uh, and spend my day like in nature and another thing if you deal with risk is really that you try to be you not know, too big-headed you know here comes Hanisar putting down a blistering time just when it matters it, I feel okay everything under control is he going I'm the best you know it kind of like a warning light comes on and I'm like, oh, oh, just take care, something is wrong, because it's not like this, you know. I'm human and the uh, risk, biggest risk is actually myself.